series called Out of the Mud and the Mire. Can y'all say Out of the Mud and the Mire? And this is a direct quote out of Psalm chapter 40, verse 2. In the New Living Translation, it says, He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He lifted me out of that pit of despair. Y'all ever been in a pit of despair before? Anybody? How many of y'all been lifted out of that pit? Yeah? He wants to do that regularly. He set my feet on solid ground. Can you say solid ground? And steadied me as I walked along. Steady. Man, life, life with Jesus is just so much different than life without him. That might be the most basic and obvious statement. But I just remember doing life without the Holy Spirit, doing life without Jesus as my rock wasn't steady. Y'all remember? Do you remember? Do you? Do you remember life without him? Maybe somebody grew up knowing the Lord. I'm here to tell you today, any steadiness in your steps in a relationship with him is because of him. And I'm here today to tell us, people, there are many who are not steady in their stepping who need the Lord Jesus. We are called to spread the good news of Jesus. He'll steady some steps. This morning I wanted to take some time. Uh, the title of this morning's message is Counsel or Cancel. Can you say counsel or cancel? And what I want to talk about this morning is humanity's tendency to see the dirty and to say, yuck, how could you, how dare you, you're disgusting, no more. I want nothing to do with you. Go, go die somewhere for all I care. Does that sound like our God? No. No. But it's a real thing. People are doing this. And, and I don't want us to say, oh yeah, well, other people are doing this. So I want to talk about what all these other people are doing. All these people out here looking at people they disagree with or who are doing wrong or whatever. They're not like me. And other people are, are canceling those people. Y'all, we... <laughs> I'm here talking to us. I'm here talking to us. I think we can have a habit sometimes of reading the scriptures and identifying with the hero or the victim. Not often do we identify with the Pharisees. <laughs> it's real, man. It's real. There's so much opportunity to learn from what we see in Scripture, from like all perspectives. And so this morning, we're going to start off, we're going to read in John chapter 8, verses 1 through 12. And, and you might have heard this referred to as the story where a woman is caught in adultery. How about this? It could be a story where the Pharisees are caught in hypocrisy. Right? It could be a story about Jesus wrecking them all with his love. Let's start off here, John 8, 1 through 12. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple area, and the people were coming to him. And he sat down and began teaching them. Now the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in the act of adultery. And after placing her in the center of the courtyard, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. What then do you say? It says now they were saying this to test him so that they might have grounds for accusing him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger he wrote on the ground. 
Now, you've probably heard many sermons where people tell you what they think Jesus was doing. You know, I've heard sermons before where people say Jesus stooped down and he wrote out the sins of the Pharisees in the sand. And when they saw that, they were like, oh, okay, I see what you're doing here, Jesus. Never mind. You know what? No matter what he was doing, I'll tell you one thing he was doing. He was being slow to speak. Right? Being slow to speak. Listen. When the world is on fire and everyone's yelling, accusing, when everybody's saying, condemn them! You know what's going to happen? They're going to be very annoyed when you don't go, yeah, shame on you! We need to be quick to listen, slow to speak. Amen? Jesus here, he's taking pause. I like it. People, people like, they like to get that like quick snap back, let's boxing match situation. Jesus is like, oh yeah. Jesus, what, 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 what then do you say? And they're like, hey, dude, what, what are you doing? We just, asked, we just asked you a question. Why aren't you answering? Why aren't you answering? You need to answer. You need to accuse. You need to condemn. You need to tell us. Shame on her. Tell us what we want to hear. Reading on. When they persisted in asking him, he straightened up and said to them, <laughs> Jesus, you're so good. He who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Now when they heard this, they began leaving one by one, beginning with the older ones. And he was left alone, and the woman where she was in the center of the courtyard. Let's keep going. And straightening up, Jesus said to her, a woman, where are are they? Did no one condemn you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go. From now on, do not sin any longer. Isn't that beautiful? I do not condemn you either. This morning, I want to I take some things away from this portion of Scripture that I think we can all learn from. I find it so beautiful how Jesus interacted here, that he engaged with people, that, that when everybody saw a mud monster and this woman caught in adultery, Jesus saw a child. When everyone says, look at the monster, look for the child. People aren't hopeless. People are not hopeless. We cannot give up hope on them. Amen? Amen? We cannot shun them. We cannot cancel them. We need to come alongside people and help them. But they're, what they're doing is terrible. I don't disagree. But what are we going to do about it? If, if, if what something... Listen, the woman caught in adultery. I think sometimes we read that and we just look at her like a victim. What if that was your wife? What if it was your wife that cheated on you? Right? That would be hard. That would have some real life impact on you. You'd be like, whoa, 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 this is not okay. What if it was your best friend's spouse? Jesus was always engaging with people who were straight up doing jacked up stuff. And I know we can read back and just make them a victim. How about the tax collectors? What if that tax collector was making money off your widowed grandma? 
You see, it's easy sometimes for us to go, oh, those Pharisees are so judgmental. And listen, they, they were pretty judgmental. I'm just saying we can learn here because what Jesus was showing was that even the people that were hurting his children, they are worth getting down in the mud with and lifting them out. Amen? Not saying shame on you, yuck. Not saying until you get right, I want nothing to do with you. But saying, no, I seek you. I'm engaging with you. I want you. And it's funny as I was, as I was studying this week. Um, so this video, right? You see how the mud like gradually comes off of her face? Um, obviously, well, not obviously, maybe, but we had to record that um, and then flip it backwards. And so we landed in a place where Sarah's face was just covered with mud. And she looked honestly terrifying. Like, it was so scary. I didn't even put the, the picture that it started with. Like, we had to make sure we grabbed one that didn't look like it was straight out of a horror movie because it was terrifying. I was looking at these images on my computer just like, if anyone didn't know what I was doing, this would be the weirdest thing in the world, you know? But it was, it was interesting because as I was studying this week, I was thinking back to when we were all finished, Sarah was completely covered. She couldn't see. She couldn't even open her mouth. She was covered in mud. And you know what we did? We started cleaning it off of her. We started reaching in and cleaning it off of her. And I was just seeing Jesus doing that. Us getting in, getting up close to people and serving them, loving them, even if we completely disagree with them. Amen? Amen? Even if they hurt your best friend, even if they hurt you. Now hear God. Hear God and obey Him. But I don't want to put boxes where they don't belong. And I don't want to write people off. There's hope. Amen? Essentially, what we're talking about is not regarding people according to the flesh. Uh, we can see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 17. Or actually, we'll read through 20 here. If you would, please, uh, any words that are in bold, I've bolded those for emphasis. Um, please read those along with me. It says, therefore, from now on, we recognize no one by the flesh. Even though we have known Christ by the flesh, yet we know him in this way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, this person is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now, all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, not the ministry of damnation. Do you hear me? The ministry of reconciliation. Reconcile means to be brought together, not to separate. Big difference. And it goes on, man. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their wrongdoings against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. How many of y'all are grateful that God's not holding your sins against you? Show of hands. Come on, y'all. You grateful? All right, then why are we holding anybody's sins against them? We all have room to grow, don't we? We all have our pet patsy. You know? For me, it's judgmental Christians. Honestly. But I can become judgmental of judgmental Christians. Straight up, it's all a trap. It's like <laughs> any, if you regard the flesh, you're going to land in the flesh. If we can see Christ in people, look for the child. If we can see that, 
Engage with that person who is a person, not a monster. Don't bite the bait of demonizing people. People are still people. They might be all sorts of demonically oppressed or possessed. I don't know, but there's still a human being there who God loves and there's hope for. And we have a ministry of reconciliation, not saying, shame on you, how could you? I'm going to hold your sins against you, but saying, listen, listen, I see you're hurting. Y'all ever hear, like, it's, it's a very um, common thing, but like, hurting people hurt people? I think it's God's desire to heal both the hurt and the hurting in that equation, right? So let's say someone did you dirty. God cares about you, right? He cares about your pain. He cares about what's happened to you, and he wants to help and heal and bring reconciliation, amen? But also that hurting person who hurt you in the first place, he wants to reach in. He wants to help. He wants to minister to them. But they're an enemy. (laughs) Well, fine, then do what Jesus tells you to do with enemies. (laughs) the world loves people when it's beneficial and popular my hope is that the church is a people who love people when it's not I used to have so much hatred towards the abusers of my past. I have nothing but love. I recognize sin is a manifestation of lack and pain. Hurting people hurt people. I believe that's true. I really do. I believe that's true. And so for me to say, because I was hurt by the hurting person, my hurt trumps theirs. They're the worst. They're the scum. It's unfair. Now again, hear God. Because I don't want you flippantly throwing yourself in the presence of somebody who has maybe hurt you and may continue to just, you know, stomp on you. The Spirit of God will bring balance and wisdom in all of this. But what do you harbor in here? And if he tells us to engage and speak, will we? The current things could be old things. If we weren't holding them over people's heads. We are made what? New creatures in Christ, right? Do y'all believe that's possible? I'm going to ask you again. Do y'all believe that's possible? to actually be made a new creature. That old things, what? They pass away. So listen, if you're you're grabbing the old things from somebody's past, including your own, and hovering them over yourself like this cloud, you're preventing the new creature from thriving. Let the old things pass away. Your old things their old things, and let's see the newness that comes in relationship with God. We've been given the message of reconciliation. That's quite the delegation. And it's very contrary. Everybody's yelling at everybody right now. Have y'all noticed this? I'm sure you've noticed this. I don't care who you are. 
I'm a Republican, I'm a liberal, I'm a taco, I'm a Cheeto, I don't know, like what, I'm a this, I'm a that, and I'm right, and you're wrong, and you're wrong, and I'm right, and I'm every blah, 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 It's disgusting. Let's not, blech. This is important to reference, though, because I do believe there's a lot of believers who are yielding to a political spirit and who are writing off brothers, sisters, children of God who are saying, because you're this other thing and you're this other thing, nothing to do with you. You're inferior. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. Remember Jesus. Remember Jesus. And there's obviously implications and all that stuff, belief systems, etc. I'm not here to talk to you about that. I'm here to say, let's not dismiss people. Amen? Let's not write off categories of people. Amen? Let's make sure we keep people as people, right? Not turn them into mud monsters. Right? Y'all remember Jesus said, uh, y'all are foolish to try to take the speck out of your brother's eye when you've got a log in your own. Some people are like, I don't have a log. There's your log. You know what I mean? There's self-righteousness. You know? And listen, I'm here, I'm preaching to me too, okay? Just for the record. Like sometimes people are like, man, Stephen comes in hard. Yeah, I get it, okay? I know. But I love you. It's not like I wake up going, how can I upset people this morning? You know what I mean? I don't, <laughs> you guys... God, God showed me, um, it was while I was preaching once, and I've just clung on to it. He, he said this thing through me that I was just like, thank you, Lord, that sets me free. I only ruffle your feathers so you can fly. Amen. And I was just like, oh, thank you, Lord. Because I do, I carry this weight sometimes. But I just want us to be free. That's all I want. I want us to be free to be who we were designed to be and to engage with and love people in a way that Jesus actually calls us to. The hatred you feel shows the healing you need. No, it shows their error. The hatred you feel shows the healing you need. Pe listen, I get it. People have, if we're, if we're holding wrongs against people, there would be plenty to hate. We've been explicitly told not to do that. Like, hardcore. It's not what love does. But what about how am I going to accomplish vengeance or justice? We've been told God is going to take care of that. And I believe we have a part in some of that, but it does not look like condemnation. It does not look like shame. It doesn't look like the weapons of this world, the carnal weapons. It looks like self-sacrificial love. That's what it looks like. It looks like doing what Jesus said to do. Do good to your enemies. Do good to them. Not even to speak good to them. Do good to them. Not speak bad about them, but then go do good for them. Do good. Pray for them. Amen? Let's be these kind of people, man. It's freeing, honestly. All that hatred, it's just like, it's like, it's just these roots that can, like, they can find you. It's gross. You can be so much freer if you let it go. You don't have to let it dictate who you are or how you act. You can be healed. And I believe so can they. Whoever they is, because they really is us. What Jesus did was for everybody. We want them to receive it, yes. Doesn't change the fact he did it for everybody. We're all children of God. Many are lost. And our desire is that they are found. Amen? 
And we have a part to play in that, amen? And it doesn't look like condemning them. It doesn't look like doing the enemy's job for him. People already hate themselves. Do you hear me? They don't need more of whatever you're giving. They need love, despite actions, regardless of actions. They need to know Jesus is not holding their sins against them. That's what we all need, isn't it? Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah chapter 11. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. Who are we talking about, by the way? Okay, cool. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel. Can you all say the Spirit of counsel? And strength. The Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. I think rather than embracing the Spirit of counsel that comes by the Spirit of God, Many of us have yielded to a spirit of cancel that's from the world. Where we say, no, yuck, never, get gone. I love this word counsel, because if you look up what it actually means, like, which let's go ahead and do. The word for counsel here is etza. It means advice, counsel, and purpose. Can y'all say purpose? You see... What I see when we just like condemn people is we say, you have nothing to offer. Get gone. I love that it's like, I just see Jesus coming in and being like, hey, I see you. I recognize you're hurting. I recognize everybody hates you. I don't. I love you. I want to help you. I want to tell you who you are. You have purpose. Isn't that impactful? Imagine if you felt worthless and somebody came to you and said that. That would lift you up a little bit, wouldn't it? Hello? That's good news. It almost sounds like the gospel. Holy Spirit's very name in Scripture, I mean, I don't know if it's actual name, but Jesus said, you know, when I go, I'll send you a helper right? Um, the word for that is, man, I mess it up every time. I even listen to the guy saying, Strong's G, you know what I mean? It's like parakletos, something like that. And it means counselor summoned, called to one's side. Can y'all say called to one's side? especially called to one's aid, a helper and an assistant. That's how the Spirit of God operates. He doesn't say, hey, listen, clean up, you nasty. And then once you got it all figured out, come to me and I'll help you. What would you even need help with? You already got it all figured out. That's why Jesus was saying, I'm here to heal the sick, not the whole I wish that there were like parentheses around the healthy every time he said that, because that's what he meant. He was saying, y'all think you got it all figured out, therefore I can't help you with nothing. But if you'll recognize that you don't, I want to help you. But I'm just saying, if our God is someone who counsels, don't y'all think that's what we're called to do? Hello? That's what we're called to do. We're called to engage, not right off engage get down in the mud and the mire serve love help show people they have purpose they're not forgotten there's more there's hope let's go ahead and look at second corinthians chapter 7 verse 10 
I just bolded this whole thing. You know, I figured we could read this together. Ready? For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance to a salvation without regret, leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death. What does the sorrow of the world do? It produces death. What does godly sorrow do? It, it, it leads us into, it produces a repentance that leads us into what? Salvation. Condemnation and condemning is a death trap. Literally. It brings death. There is a need for repentance. Okay? But it's not the byproduct of being condemned. Did you hear me? This, this point matters. Repentance is not the byproduct of your condemnation. It is the byproduct of Jesus saying, I'll take it all upon myself. Because of how much I love you. And I'm not holding it against you. And you start to go, what? Wow. And then change happens. And you know what's funny? It's like we talk about transformation and all of that. It's like we think about we're being transformed into something that we're not. It's, it's not the case. It's like we're being transformed into who we really are in him. Amen? Listen, Christianity and spirituality, the Holy Spirit is not a manipulator. He's a revealer. He shows us who we actually are. He shows us our purpose. Everything else is trying to tell us who we are or who we aren't. <laughs> Jesus is like, man, y'all are making a mess of this. I'm going to get down. I'm going to love you. I'm going to tell you, you got purpose. And yeah, I'm going to say, get up and sin no more. But you know what? I'm going to say, first, I don't condemn you. The order of that matters. He said, woman, where are, you where are your accusers? Anyone condemn you? No, Lord. Neither do I condemn you. First, go, sin no more. People have to be set free to live free. You know? It's like with, I'm just imagining if Sarah tried to open her eyes and like see when we had all that stuff caked on her face, she wouldn't have been able to do it. We're not expecting people, and God's not expecting people to get out of the mud pit on their own. He's not expecting you to do cartwheels in the quicksand. He wants to lift you out of the quicksand, and then say, get your cartwheel on. Right? But it's got to be him. It's got to be grace. And it's got to be real. There is no fruit in condemnation. There is no fruit in condemnation. It only produces death and regret aren't y'all grateful that the sorrow of god leads to salvation without regret Woo without regret anybody in the house regret something you did last week hey guess what good news there's a repentance without regret you can change you can turn without beating yourself up every day about what you did before. Clean slate, new creature, old things pass away. Let them pass away. You digging them up and put them before yourself is not helping. Neither is it helpful when we do that to others. Okay? 
2 Corinthians 5.21 says this. Let's read together. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Let's just keep that up there for a little bit. You see, there's something to what the Pharisees were doing with this woman. And there's something to uh, what we do when we say, condemn them. It's called scapegoating. Y'all ever heard of that before? Um, Essentially, what you're doing is you're distracting yourself from all of your own stuff. And you're projecting it onto somebody else. And you're going, yuck, 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 to make yourself feel above and better. But really, you're just throwing your own mud on them. And it's disgusting. It's not helpful to you or to them. It's actually, uh, the term scapegoat comes from the Bible. Did you know that? Uh, It's in, I think, yeah, Leviticus 16. Uh, They used to do this thing where all the, the priest would figuratively lay all the sins of the people on this goat and they'd send it out into the wilderness. How many of y'all know? We don't need to scapegoat when we've received the slain lamb. Hello? Hello? Right? Like, I thought, I thought my stuff was already taken care of on the cross. I thought their stuff was already taken care of on the cross. So why are we slinging it at each other? Why are we picking someone and sending them into the wilderness to die? Let's not. (laughs) Amen? Let's remember and receive a true salvation. And let's extend the same thing. Anything more, Lord? The things that we've talked about this morning, they can only actually be walked out by the Spirit of God. Do you hear me? You can't, you can't hear what I said. Be like, yeah, that does look different. That looks, looks like light shining into darkness. It looks different than what my natural tendencies are to do, so I'm just going to try really hard to do that. You won't be able to do it, you know? But if we'll yield to him, And we'll let the Spirit of God actually do this through us. We're going to see transformation. We're going to see change. Let's go ahead and pull up those questions for consideration this week. Number one, are you holding anyone's sins against them, causing separation? Number two, Are you projecting your sin onto any scapegoats? In what ways can you relate to the woman caught in adultery, the scribes and Pharisees, and Jesus? Make sure you take some time on that last one, (laughs) all right? Is that helpful? Yeah? I mean, I hope it is, genuinely. Let's love people well, in Jesus' name.
by his strength. Amen. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. I hope this message was a blessing to you. Yeah, hey, we just wanted to give you the opportunity as well to partner up and plug in to the church uh, by giving. So if you would like to be a part of that and help make this all possible, you can do so by going to wearelovechurch.com slash give. You can also plug in, stay in the loop with what's going on at the church via our Instagram and Facebook platforms. So love y'all. God bless you.